Hello and welcome back to Let's Play Adam RPG with me, Frank First thing we're going to do is read this journal. Uh, the Tattered Journal. An old notebook with a cardboard cover. 19-1-2003. Uh, the reason why this diary came to life is so stupid. I feel rather, rather awkward to talk about it. Really. Or about it, it. However, taking into account the suspicious events of the past few days, I feel it is necessary to do so. Exactly two weeks ago, I was passing through Krasno. I was planning to sell a couple of wire rolls and buy some food, which I did. But as I was going to step out of the city walls, a crowd of gypsies surrounded me. An old gypsy woman, clearly the leader, offered to tell my fortune. The next thing I knew, she was studying my hand with a feigned interest. I expected traditional, a lot of happiness, sea of pain. And then they demand, then the demand to pay for the prediction. What happened next came as a surprise. She let go of my hand and stared me in the eyes, frightened for some reason. He's following you, she whispered. I wondered who was following me, but the old woman didn't give me time to inquire. Watch the sky, she screamed, and disappeared with her cronies, who went very quiet suddenly. To be honest, I was puzzled. Not so much by her prediction, but rather by the fact they hadn't stolen anything from me. I stood there for a while, and having decided at last, all of this must be nothing but stupid superstitions of stupid people, I went on. But her words about someone following me were now so imprinted on my memory. I had trouble going to sleep that night. Uh, the thought that I was being watched bothered me, and a clear winter sky I could see from the window brought back her warning. Watch the skies. I was still nervous in the morning. My head was full of obsessive, frightening thoughts. From time to time, I would look around and check on the skies, as if expecting it to change somehow. Everything looked just as usual, but then a thought crawled in my mind that it seemed fake, as if the curtain fell from my eyes after what the old gypsy woman had said, and I started seeing some wrongness in the world around. I thought I was going mad. The stresses of life finally turned me into a paranoid, paranoid, a paranoic, or a schizophrenic, or both. But then something happened today that gave flesh to my vague suspicions. I noticed someone, in the corner of my eye, far away. He was clearly following me. The silhouette was human, but I couldn't make out the details. Anyway, this was enough. If not to disperse the thought I was going crazy, then at least to start exploring other options. So I'm sitting in front of the fire, looking at the starry skies and writing my thoughts down. May my diary be my ally, if I'm really losing my mind or if there's really someone watching me. 3-11-2003 I'm leaving a note here again. Just a little addition to the first one. It is very important. I'm really being watched. I've noticed a dark figure looming on the horizon more than once. Still, every time I move in his direction to check, the bastard disappears. But I know I saw him. I think I should set snares and traps around. I have a couple theories about who it might be. The first, and also the most probable one, is that it's the gypsies playing some kind of a game with me. I don't really understand what it is they're after. Maybe at some point they will turn up with some magical talisman, protection from evil spirits, or some other anti-scientific trinket. If this is their plan, they've chosen the wrong person. These ridiculous tales won't scare me. If they bring their magical crap to me, I swear, I'll open fire. My second theory is that someone's planning to mug me. This too is possible. In any case, I think the traps will not be out of place. By the way, I cast a glance at the sky every now- or at the sky- now every time before going to sleep, and there is something about it, as if it changes all the time. It looks different every night. 5-11-2003 Today I've got another proof I was watched. I was checking the traps and found a scrap of fabric in one of them. It seems woolen, painted black. The scrap I, had, I got had a golden star embroidered upon it. I couldn't understand what item of clothes it was torn off. It was torn off. Trousers, a jacket, a coat, perhaps even a raincoat. What matters is that someone's been loafing around so close to my camp. In other news, rabbits got trapped in two of the snares. Not bad. 17-11-2003 uh, My phantom follower hasn't shown his face for almost a month, and I all but forgot about the diary. But this night, I had to get down to it again. At first I thought it was a wounded animal's wailing that woke me up. But as soon as I got my bearings, I realized the ear-piercing sound that had made me jump in cold sweat had something unnatural about it. Animal's house full of pain, fear, and anxiety. This, however, sounded blank, emotionless, like a signal. Or a siren. People say in ancient Greece sirens lured seamen to rocks. Perhaps he wants me to make me wants to make me leave the camp. 
I think I was right about his guilty intent. But they've chosen the wrong guy. I know a thing or two myself. 20, 111, 2003. It's night again. I was, or maybe he means the third. I was woken up by the rattling squeak again. I armed myself and crawled into the camp, or to the cramp, to the camp's border. No one. Then suddenly there was rustling of the leaves under the feet of someone invisible. Someone, someone running right at me from the underwood. In the quiet of the night, it sounded deafening. I rushed back to the camp, barely managing to cling to my only means of protection against this bugger and his gang. I was running for about two minutes when I realized there was nobody following me. So they weren't going to mug me? What the hell were they after? Are they after? What does this black bastard want from me? The days are still too short to go in search of the gypsies who foretold my fortune, and they must have long since left these lands. I need to collect myself. So 23... I don't know if that's 3 or 111. 2003. The third night passed quickly. I had no dreams. I had no sensation of time. It felt as if I just lay down and switched off for seven hours. In the morning, I did some household chores. I extracted a young roe from a trap. There were no traces of human presence around the camp. They must have decided to be more careful after the last encounter. The next day, to the, or 24, I was studying the skies all night. I must not have trusted what I saw before, writing my findings off as pure coincidence or tricks of the eye. But now it's obvious it's all true. The stars are going out. I couldn't locate the dimmest star in the Great Bear. Sagittarius' string is thinned, visibly. What is going on? The next day, I have an idea, or rather, a hypothesis. What if the end of the world is not just an expression? What if the phrase we use to call the outcome of the Great War is literal, made up by adding to its constituents? A rueful prophecy, like the one of that gypsy, but on a global scale. What if it's not my personal follower clad in black, the leader of a criminal gang, but a metaphor of the darkness thickening over the world? What if the bombs fell and killed the light? Now the blackness is shrouding us every night, thicker and thicker. There are ever fewer stars in the sky. It's all but gone out. Don't be scared of the sky. Don't worry. Don't run from me. Don't be scared of the sky. Don't worry. Don't run from me. Don't be scared of the sky. Don't worry. Don't run from me. Don't be scared of the sky. Don't worry. Don't run from me. It is nonsense. Nonsense. But it's true. Or is it? Yes, it is. My senses can't lie. My memory can't deceive me. I slept like a log last night, emaciated after watching the blackening sky. It wasn't me who left the latest note. It wasn't me who wrote these nonsensical words about the sky. Jeez, it's not even my handwriting. Who was it? Someone sneaked into my camp, or snuck into my camp. It's not safe anymore. I can't stop shaking. Every time I think about him sneaking around, the black figure sent by the gypsies. What gypsies? What do gypsies have to do with it? He leaned over my sleeping body. He rummaged through my belongings. He breathed at me. He wrote in my diary. Leave me alone. What do you want? The 30th. I decided not to wait till morning. I hear footsteps around the camp. Uh, he wants to get in again, to continue writing in my diary. So I fled, with all the stuff I could carry in the early hours of the morning. I moved to a cave not too far from my... Bivouac? I've seen this word before, I don't know how to pronounce it. It's good here. Uh, deep and safe. Just one exit. Just one entrance. Easy to guard. Don't have to be scared. Yeah, okay. He is using Roman numerals now. 1 4 2003. Pulling the cave entrance didn't open up to the sky. I wouldn't. Yeah, I wouldn't know. I'd be calmer, less anxious about myself and my future. But I see it. The last stars are leaving the sky. It's pitch dark. There's no hope anymore. 13 4 2003. No more supplies. Just some water in the flask. I'm afraid to go out and check the snares. He won't let me go outside. He scuffs in the fallen leaves at the entrance. As soon as I come close to the entrance, he jumps up and starts shrieking. He never sleeps. He's always there, at the threshold, waiting. The same color as the dead sky. Invisible. He's here. So, I forgot to do this, but if you sleep in that cave that you find that diary in, in that random encounter, you might get experience, but you get woken up to a special notification. I don't remember exactly what it says. We're going to go over here first thing. Because I noticed that I missed... Oh, where's it at? We didn't loot this last time we were over here. So we'll take care of that first thing. And then we also have a timed explosive for that 
locker that's in the way in that other building. Also, someone had let me know that that uh, yeah, the stone tool that plus 30 damage to cosmic horrors applies to the blind death. I did not know that the blind death was considered a cosmic horror. Otherwise, we could have uh, taken him out last episode. Or the episode before that. No, last episode. That's when we got the stone tool. Um, there's another enemy that I'm pretty sure is considered a cosmic horror. He might not be. How'd I get radiated? Did I run through radiation? I uh, probably ran close to those barrels that were over there. Well, maybe I can ignore it. I don't think it goes up by itself, right? Yeah, I plan on going to... Oh, right here. Yeah, I plan on going to Ochidori soon. After we uh, turn in this quest to... Um, Dan. Uh, where's my time explosive at? Okay. So timed explosive, we will... Oh, if I open this up? Yeah, perfect. Alright, timed explosive, come here. Yeah, we'll do 20 seconds. Come on out, guys. Get away from over there. Fidel, thank you. some epiphenum for radiation uh, and then a bunch of junk a meldonium which gives you plus two endurance for 12 hours but then after those 12 hours you um, 50 percent chance of having minus two endurance and then apomorphine cure from withdrawal which we might need here shortly also i need duct tape or electrical tape so I'm going to check the... Uh, bandits. Here at the abandoned factory for some electrical tape because I can craft something. If I have the skill for it. If not, I have a couple items that I can boost my uh, tinkering skill with. Have we talked to this guy before? Oh yeah, this guy. Is, yeah, he's like, I'm not a dog. What about this guy? I don't know if I recognize this guy. I oh, see an energetic man. He looks around 25. He's wearing a simple jacket. He smiles at you when you move in closer. Hey, can I ask you some questions? Hey there, Wanderer. Ask all you like. I have nothing to do apart from chatting. The day is too calm for anything else. How's life? It's okay. I left the guys I was hanging out with before. Thank God for that. With my new crew, I don't feel like the scum of the earth anymore. Here in the factory, we're all men of a higher purpose. Yep, that we are. And that's just great. I right, go ahead. Uh, tell me about this place. Look around. Quite the place, right? We all... We, all of this is ours. Oh, well, sorry. Why was I saying why? Well, all of this is ours, you know. Me and the boys. We own it. Not bad, huh? It will last a lifetime. Some guys are resting. Some are on patrol duty. Now that's what I call living. I see. And what are you busy with? What do you think I'm doing? I'm just chilling, thinking about stuff. All that while watching the perimeter so that nobody gets in without an invitation or a bullet hole to the face. Or in the face. It's my day off, but still I stay, stay vigilant. Yep. Uh, why did you get a day off? All my days are days off. 
Students live life between exams. Oh wait, I've read, I've talked to this guy already. Yeah, so he stashed the knife. Okay, so him and the other guy that we found in the cave under the Roaring Forest are different. My bad. One's, uh... What was the other guy's name? Steppen. Steppen and Stas. Uh, before you stands a beefy, tan man in a stained apron. A butcher's knife is resting behind a rope that serves him as a belt. He is pensively stirring the contents of a well-preserved field kitchen. Most probably, he's a local chef. Having noticed you, the man nods at you. Hello. Are you looking for chow or to trade? I like a snack. What's on the menu today? Uh, some mamaliga and wood dust porridge. Mamaliga for the taste, wood dust for nutritional value. Oh uh, yeah, I'd like to get in on that. You shrug and dig into your meal. The food tastes odd, but the hunger starts to fade away. And in the end, isn't that the only thing that counts? Oh, thank you. Uh, let's talk some more. The chef nods before stirring his pot once again. Can I ask for a small discount? Oh no you don't. We're not a soup kitchen. If you want food, you buy it. Full price. I uh, can I ask you a few questions. We have time. Ask away. Uh, tell me about yourself. My name... Uh, by name, I'm Butin. Or Butin? Peter Butin. I'm from Kazan originally. But look where fate brought me. I left my birthplace because life was getting too dangerous. And then I joined the gang. Glad to have a place somewhere in the world. I got your point. Uh, what are you busy with? I'm a chef. My mother was a strong woman. Uh, she hunted for a living. Always took me with her into the woods. I learned the mastery of cooking things from her. How to boil a good fish, how to skin an elk, how to make ground meat without a meat grinder. I can also make several types of stew. Mother schooled me right. Your mother was a huntress? I can respect that. No problem, ask away. That's not really a response to that, is it? Uh, tell me about this place. It was an old factory, but now it's our castle. We observe the surrounding lands from here. It's a good life. Not great, but good. Suddenly, look, they, yeah, suddenly the cook looks at you with sadness. I kiss a small stone beneath his feet. My pal got sick lately. I doubt he'll ever get better. His name is Stenka. Better known as Stenka the Death Shooter. Some freaking psychos cut him up in a fight. So he injected himself with some pre-war army tranquilizers. I think it's called Stimulant Defend or something like that. Ugh. And now he's an idiot. You may find him walking around camp like a ghost of his former self. He was such an intellectual before it happened. A true thinker. Ugh. A sad story. Oh, uh, what rumors did you hear? They say that four master chefs live in the surrounding lands. One of them can cook any fish out there and make it taste good. The other, the other specializes in mutated insects. He knows which parts of these creatures to eat, and which parts are there to be used for different purposes. The third master chef knows the ways of herbs and spices. They say he can come up with some grass and weed into multiple amazing dishes. If you hand him some barley, he will also serve dessert. But only a few people talk about the fourth master chef, because he mastered the cooking processes of the most taboo meat, human. Why would I say that? Okay. Um, interesting. Another question. Alright, that is it. Alright, let's go talk to the guy that's strung out on drugs. See if we can say anything new to him now that we've spoken to his friend. It was the guy that wasn't wearing a shirt, but now I don't see him. Oh, there he is. He's blending in with the uh, the fire. I wonder if you can inject him with something to fix him. I'm gonna assume not. I don't want to waste any of my, any of my valuable drugs on that guy. In front of you stands a tall man in dusty clothes. Oh wait, I've already read that. Ah, Donnie, what brings you here? I've come to report. Go on then. I checked out the Roaring Forest and came to an unexpected conclusion. Oh? 
and what's your conclusion? It turns out the forest rumbles because there is a massive colony of mutant insects burrowing and digging tunnels beneath it. Dan raises an eyebrow in surprise, but soon calms down. Fascinating. So it's because of mutants. That's a more logical explanation than all of these nonsense stories about pre-war machinery and underground trains. It was worth it though to find out once and for all what was going on, and to put an end to all the rumors, however stupid. Later takes a bundle of bills from the breast of his jacket and hands it to you. Here's your traveling allowance, 1,300 rubles, and you earned every last kopeck. Unless, of course, you feel like bartering, in which case I can't guarantee full payment. Understood. Take the money. Dan runs a hand through his hair and looks up at the ceiling. Come back tomorrow and get a new assignment. For now, you're free to roam. Alright, I'll be on my way. Quest log has been updated. I think now is a good time to go back and... Speak to Kovalev. Plus we need to visit the doctor anyway because we're in... Not the best shape. And again, if I can find some electrical tape, I can craft a stone knife. Which will be better than the stone tool for killing cosmic horrors. I think they did a really good job with the artwork. Alright, probably hit one random encounter before we hit Ultra Noia. Yep, I had Caravanners. Perfect. Maybe they'll have electrical tape for me to purchase. He has no rubles. And he doesn't have electrical tape either. This guy is wasting my time. Right. Oh, perfect. So I didn't get a chance to do this encounter last time I played the game. But we can do it now. I see a man wearing a tinfoil hat. He's shifting from one foot to the other, from time to time shouts out nonsense phrases. A small pig is sitting at his feet, obviously the madman's companion. As you come closer, the man immediately clamps his lips shut. His insane gaze stops darting about and focuses on you. The idiot has come to look in the mirror, and the mirror is calling him an idiot. What do you want? Do you want to ride oink? I won't let a pig piggyback a pig. That wouldn't be right. Bring me a human, and oink will give him a ride. For money, that is. For expensive coin to get his daddy some fire water. I just want to ask you a couple of questions. Tell me and I'll listen. Uh, tell me about yourself. I spit. I spit on you, darn fool. Or darn you. Uh, don't come to me with this issue. This is wrong. Ouroboros. Blue worm. Nameless. Born adult. Turned idiot. Walking after a flying arrow he cannot see. Look at him talk to us as if he were real. Choosing one out of five. One out of five is the best case scenario. And the fat one is not too lazy. He sees himself only from the top and never with his own eyes. And he dares to approach us, the fake. A simulacrum. I'll run off with I'll run you off and Oink will chase after so you don't stop running. I'll squash his silly facsimile. Ukaka. Oh, yeah. That's a tough one. Can I ask you something else? The man gives you a short nod and looks around suspiciously, as if expecting an ambush at any moment. But who are you? 
Who am I? I'm... Uh, the mad old man seizes you by the shoulders and pushes his face up to yours so that your noses almost touch. He moves so fast, even his pig starts to look up. Yes? Well? Who are you? I'm... The old man lets loose with an odd squeaky laugh. Spittle sprays from his reeking broken tooth mouth, and bile rises in your throat at his rotten breath. The madman's laughter goes on for several seconds, during which time he shakes you by the arms and jumps in place as if performing a travel dance. Without warning, he freezes with a maniacal grin, pr uh, pronounces one word. I'm glad I got that right. Like, I know how to say maniacal, but oftentimes when I read it, I say, uh, like, maniacal instead. Uh, nobody. Alright, uh, calm down, grandfather. Calm down. Listen, I have a question. Do you even know where you are? Sure, Dwarven Courtyard. The stingy sullen men and bitter women sit on their benches. They're afraid to turn their backs because each has two heads growing there. One is beaten but rich, the other is beaten but poor. Which one will you kiss, and which will you burn with... Celadine? Celadine? Or Kelandine? I go on. Cure if you're not too lazy. Ukaka. Monkey breed. That's some interesting prose. <laughs> will you share your madness with me? He who asks for rumors has no respect for his mother. Do you think your mama will forgive you? Maybe yours will just dismiss it. She's used to idiots. She's no longer appalled by them. Meanwhile, the fat mother beneath the ground, the secret mother who gathers worms, who squeezes the worm, squashes the worm, who bites the root, the root biter. Boo, that mother will give you some grief. Oh yes. Ukaka, blind children turn up black earth. Above them, idols are trembling. Soon everyone will know why they're afraid of the night. Or you bring them light. Murderer, murderer. Reminds me of the uh, scene from the uh, Princess Bride. Lovely stuff. All right. Um, all right. The idiot has come to look in the mirror. Uh, what's wrong with you? Actually, let me let me quick save first. All uh, right, right. What's wrong with me? Everything is right with me. Ricky Tiki Tavi, right. Let me rephrase my question. Tell me and I'll listen. Alright, let's talk to the pig. We. Nope. Am I missing something? Maybe I don't have the skill check required. Oh, this is new. And I'm nobody. Nobody. And you know it. Oh, you know it, slave. What? You think you see everything from up on Poppy Hill? You can't. The ridges of insanity block your view. Ukaka. There was a... Maybe I messed up the, um, the conversation. You're supposed to be able to talk to him and... Let me go talk to the doctor. Maybe it's... Let me get fixed up first. Then we'll try this again. There should be an option to talk to him to help out with his possessed pig. But I didn't see it. So this doesn't have the radiation or the withdrawal, which is fine. Yes, yeah, so I don't know. Cause I, again, I haven't done this before. Uh, the last playthrough, he never appeared in Ultra Noye when I was here. Or at least I never saw him. So here, let's go talk to the merchant. I wonder if there's a prerequisite for... Um, Alright, we need that. I don't need all of that. I just need one of these. <laughs> Uh, this might come in handy. The recovery from blindness is good. But I don't think I need it right now. Does he have rubles? He does. He has a lot of rubles. Alright, let's trade for that. 
All I need one thing of nails, I think. Oh, whoops. I probably don't need coffee. I'll keep the water on hand for right now. Don't need that. Let's see, what else can I sell? Empty bottles, don't need those. Um, let's see. Can I start by weight? Yeah, I'm gonna sell some of this. Uh, probably 15. So we shouldn't have any trouble coming across more meat in the wasteland. Uh, scrap metal's a little weighty. I'm pretty sure that we need it. But again, I know a place where we can get plenty of it later. So if, I, if push comes to shove, we do have access to it. Alright. So can't get that quest room. But I need to craft. I don't know how to craft. Here we go. Okay. So here, from the mistake we do that, that, and electrical tape. Oh, it failed. Alright. The stone crumbled into smaller, less useful stones in your hands. Probably wasn't the best condition to begin with. You've lost a sharpening stone. Okay, I'm gonna quick save before I do that then. I do have a couple ways to boost that, so we'll do that and then try it again. Because he has one of these on hand, so we'll take that and in exchange. You know what? We'll just trade this in. That's fine. Okay. Let's try this one more time. Wait, let me... Um... That, and I think the Siggy... If I can find it... Some more sharpening stones available. I want to craft this right now if I can. So let me do this again. Oh cool, there's actually a smoky animation. Did not know that. But also, let's try this again. Darn it. <sighs> well, this is as good as it's gonna get. I might have to do this off camera, because I don't think it's gonna it's gonna it's gonna take a little while, I think. Oh no, we did it! Hey, we got the stone knife. A sharpened stone knife, an exotic weapon to impress the cave dwelling ladies. I got the achievement, Neanderthal. Let's you skin animals, chance to ignore armor 10%, homemade weapon, adds plus 70 to damage against cosmic horrors. That's gonna destroy blind death. Fantastic. Well, there we go, we did it, guys. We got the stone knife. Also, I really want to do this quest. I don't know. That's gonna upset me. Because that little quest right here for this guy, it can affect your stats. You can get strength out of it, but I think it hurts your personality. What's the cough? Is the cough from radiation? 
Or is it from something else? Hmm. I don't know. Oh yeah, let's go to talk to Cobalt real quick. I lost track of the time, so let's uh speak to him real fast. See if he tells us what to do next. Let's see. I have something to tell you about the bandits. I'm all ears. I have nothing to tell you about the bandits. I lied. Well, shoot. Well, I guess I'll call it here. I'm not sure what to do next, then. I guess we can just wait for a bit and then go back and talk to the, uh... Yeah, you know what? That's what I'm gonna do. Off camera, I think I'm gonna leave Ultra Noye. I'm gonna make camp. I'm gonna rest for about a day. Then we'll go back to the abandoned factory in the next episode. Because that's the only thing I can think to do next. Also, waiting for a day. Maybe a couple days to fix this with... Uh, the fix the withdrawal might be a good idea. So what's that ticking? Sound like there's a bug nearby. Oh well, regardless, we call it here. Thanks for watching, and I hope to see you guys in the next episode.